Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain all of the essential elements of music theory in less than 30 minutes. Now to start, the first thing to understand is that you don't have to read sheet music to understand music theory or how music is organized. And for most people, learning how music is organized is way more important. So we're going to put music notation to the side and concentrate on music's structure to see that it's really all about patterns. And the first step is to understand octaves. Now this is a note. And as you probably know, sound is caused by vibration. The faster the vibration, the higher the note or pitch, the slower the vibration, the lower the note. So for example, if you double the frequency of this note, you get that one. And if you half the frequency of that note, you get this one. Now, when you look at the entire keyboard, you can see that there's a certain pattern to the whole thing. That there's this repeating pattern of two black notes, three black notes, two black notes, three black notes, all the way across. And those are divided into groups each time you double the frequency. The distance between this one and that one at the same point in the pattern is called an octave. And that's because there are eight notes that span this range. The word octave comes from the Latin term for eight. If we divide this octave into 12 equal steps, we get all of the white and black notes. Okay, now the next step is to understand intervals. The distance between any one note and the next note up or down in the United States is called a half step interval. That's a half step up, that's a half step down. And in the United Kingdom, it's called a semitone. That's a semitone. Two half steps make a whole step. So if we go, that's a whole step, that's a whole step, or in the United Kingdom, that's a tone, that's a tone. Okay, so half step, whole step, Semitone, tone. Now with all of these black and white notes, it can be a little confusing because in some spots, like at this white note, for example, the note a half step or semitone interval above is black, while the half step below is white, and a whole step or tone above is white, while the whole step below is black. But when we shift to another spot like this, the distance between the black and white notes is different. Here, it's reversed where the note a half step above is white and the half step below is black, while the whole step above is black and the whole step below is white. Do you see what I mean? And it's different still in other places on the keyboard as well. This uneven spacing between black and white notes doesn't match the even alternating pattern of half step and whole step intervals, but really all 12 notes within an octave are divided into equal units. So to picture this a little more intuitively, we can illustrate the intervals like this, as an alternating pattern of squares and circles that spans the entire keyboard. So no matter where you are, you can see which notes are separated by a half step or semitone, whether they're black or white. As you move from a square to a circle, that's a half step, or from a circle to a square, that's a half step. So square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square. Square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square, circle, square. Those are all half steps moving in either direction. Likewise, you can also see which notes are separated by a whole step without getting distracted by the black and white because any two squares are a whole step apart. These are all a whole step or a tone apart moving in either direction. While all the circles are separated by whole steps as well. also in both directions. So now with these alternating shapes, you can really see how the notes are laid out in music through a simple, predictable pattern of intervals. Note names. So far, so good, right? But up to this point, we've just been calling these notes this one and that one without using their names, which is a little rude, right? Because if we're really gonna get acquainted with these notes, then we need to know their names. And the sixth century philosopher Boethius is the person who originally named them, so the story goes, using letters to label each one. He gave this one, the letter name A, and then this one B, and then C, D, E, F, G, and then once we reach the octave, this is A again, 
then B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc., all the way up. So all of these are A's, all of these are B's, all of these are C's, and so on, okay? And the black notes follow a similar pattern of letter names, but with added symbols called sharps and flats. For example, if we play this white note, G, and then move up a half a step to this black note, it's called G sharp, because the term sharp means slightly higher in pitch. And starting on G, when we move down a half a step, this black note is called G flat, because flat means slightly lower in pitch. So a half a step up, you get G sharp, and a half a step down, you get G flat. As another example, when you play D and move up a half a step, you get D sharp, and moving down a half a step, you get D flat. The same idea applies to all of the other black notes too. It's simple enough, but as a result of this naming system, each black note ends up getting two labels, or what musicians call enharmonic names, which are just sharp and flat synonyms for the same notes. For example, the black note just below A is A flat, while at the same time, it's the note just above G, it's G sharp. So A flat and G sharp are just two ways of referring to the same note. This black note can be either G sharp or A flat. And the name you use depends on the key. Check out the links below for more on that. So we know what an octave is, we know how it's divided into intervals, and we know how to name the notes. The next question is, how do we make music from all of this? Together, all of these notes and intervals make up what's called the chromatic scale. This is all of the notes in order, so as you move from one to the next, they gradually rise, moving up the scale, or fall, moving down the scale. But while the chromatic scale forms the complete set of notes, it doesn't sound very musical on its own, right? So musicians use it more like a painter's palette to pick out smaller groups of notes that sound especially good together. And these smaller patterns like melodies and chords are made by playing only some notes while skipping others using the intervals of half steps and whole steps or semitones and tones that we've looked at. In fact, we can use intervals in all sorts of ways to create interesting sounds, including scales. And by far the most popular interval pattern of all in music is a sequence called the major scale. You have heard this before. It has a familiar, almost primal appeal. And what makes this sound so distinct is the pattern of intervals used to play it, which is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Or in UK English, that is, Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. This is what the major scale is. It's just a pattern of intervals. So starting on C, you go up a whole step, then another whole step, then a half step, then three more whole steps, one, two, three, then a half step. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Notice how the squares and circles help us picture this pattern. The first three notes, C, D, and E, are all squares, since they're all evenly spaced a whole step apart. Then from E to F is a half step from a square to a circle. Then there are three whole steps in the major scale pattern. So we stay with the circles. And then the final step from B to C brings us back to a square. So it's square, 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 circle, 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 square, or whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step half step. We begin and end on C, which is why it's called the C major scale, because it's in the key of C where C is the focal point or home base. It's just eight notes. And what's cool is we can play this same pattern of whole step and half step intervals starting on any note. So we can begin in a different place and it's still recognizable as a major scale. For example, start on G, G, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step or G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. In UK English, that's tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Now, we need to play this black note to follow the pattern of whole steps, or tones right here, so it's whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. But with the shapes to help picture these intervals, it's easy. This time, we begin on G, a circle, so the major scale pattern is G, A, B, or circle, 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 half step to a square, C, and then D, E, F sharp, G, or square, 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 circle. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the same pattern as the C major scale, but starting on a G note, a circle. So the interval shapes are reversed. You have circle, 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 square, 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 circle. And since the G notes are the bookends in this scale, we're in the key of G. As one more example, let's start on D and it looks and sounds like this. D, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Or D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Now, in this key, we actually played two black keys, the F sharp and the C sharp, to complete this pattern. But what really matters is that we're using the same consistent pattern of whole step and half step intervals, or using the Queen's English, that's tones and semitones, which again, the squares and circles show. So we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, or square, 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 circle, 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 square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The major scale is interesting because it sounds a lot better than the chromatic scale itself, right? Again, here's the chromatic scale starting on C. And then here's the major scale pattern starting on C. This interval pattern injects life into things and helps us to hear and see the connections between different notes. But what's even better, and this is where it really starts to get cool, is that this pattern of intervals, the major scale, also reveals the connections between the keys themselves in what is essentially a super mega major scale on steroids that we call the circle of fifths, which is another pattern that's also essential to music theory. So to show you what I mean, let's start with C major scale built from the sequence of whole step and half step intervals. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, at this point, we're entering the more abstract realm of music theory, so I'm gonna fade my hands for a moment to just focus on this pattern. And what you're about to see is magical, so check this out. This pattern, the C major scale, sounds nice, right? And because of how it's capped by C notes at each end, it feels complete, like a single unit that's whole and self-contained. Though looking a little closer, you'll see that it's actually only a small part of a bigger overlapping web of patterns, and this is how it works. When you split the major scale down the middle, it's made up of two equal halves, of two whole steps followed by a half step. C, D, E, F, that's the first half, then G, A, B, C, that's the second half. These two halves are just separated by a whole step in the middle, and this mini pattern of intervals is repeated to play the full scale. One, two, three, four, that's the first half. Five, six, seven, eight, that's the second half. And what's awesome is that each half of the scale shows up in two different keys. In this example, the second half of C major, G, A, B, C, is also the first half of the G major scale. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Do you see what happened there? C major and G major share four of the same notes. These two scales are connected, so you could say they sort of bleed into each other like conjoined twins in a way. And following the same pattern, the second half of G major, D, E, F sharp, G, forms the first half of another scale, D major. These two major scales also overlap, where D major starts on the fifth note of G. So G major, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the five, six, seven, eight becomes the one, two, three, four of the D major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Continuing on, D major then leads to A major, where the A major scale begins on the fifth note of D. And then each scale leads to and overlaps with the next in the same continual chain. And by continual, I mean it really goes on forever. So we can picture it all like this as a daisy chain sequence that forms an endless ring we call the circle of fifths, because each new scale starts on the fifth note of the previous scale. So it's the circle of fifths. Which results in this pattern of keys. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F, and then back to C. Okay, so clearly there is something going on here with the circle of fifths. 
Each major scale is connected and this pattern is consistent in all 12 keys. I mean, it's almost like music is trying to show us something. But with all of the letter names for notes, it's still sort of busy, both visually and conceptually. For example, although the G major scale is equal parts C and D, and we can actually see this overlap in the circle of fifths, this link is obscured by the letters C, G, and D, which don't have any natural connection in everyday life. C, G, and D. How could you intuitively know these keys are conjoined? Well, we can, and the answer is to picture these natural patterns of sound, music, using the natural patterns of sight, color, and specifically using the color wheel, which happens to mirror the way notes and keys relate in the circle of fifths. And I don't just mean they're similar, I mean the match is exact, both visually and conceptually, in the way that all the colors bleed seamlessly into one another, just as all the keys overlap as well. For example, you can see how G, red-orange, is made of equal parts C, red, and D, orange. And how D, orange, is equal parts G, red-orange, and A, orange-yellow. And how A, orange-yellow, is equal parts D, orange, and E, yellow, and so on. It's consistent through all 12 keys. So what you hear is what you see, since the color wheel and the circle of fifths follow the very same pattern. They are the same pattern, only one is audible while the other is visible. But like two languages that tell the same story, they are essentially one. And right here, I should mention that this is, by definition, what music theory really is. Literally, the phrase means the act of contemplating music, and the word theory comes from the Greek theoria, which means to look at, view, speculate, or see. So now that we've merged sound with sight in this way, you can really master music theory. All you have to do is convert the 12 keys of the circle of fifths back into the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, since that's the pattern we use to make music on an instrument. And to do this, you just take every other key in the circle of fifths, like all the circles for example, and then rotate them 180 degrees, so that each pair of complementary colors swaps places. And like magic, you're suddenly looking at the chromatic scale again, a twisted color wheel with all of the notes laid out in sequence. C, D flat, D, E flat, E, etc. It's beautiful how these two fundamental patterns morph into each other like this. And what's better is that we can now leverage the visible patterns and geometry of color to quickly understand and master the audible geometry of music, because all of these color relationships perfectly mirror the patterns of music which apply to the piano keyboard and the guitar fretboard and music notation if you want or any other configuration you like. And now that you've cracked the code to music theory, you can quickly learn to play every possible pattern, including all the modes in every key, which are just permutations of the major scale, which I explain in another video series, and every possible chord in all 12 keys, which stem from the underlying scale of a key, as I also explain in another series. You can also gain insight into how all chord progressions work following the natural looping patterns of harmony to compose any progressions you'd like, and by extension, how to play and write entire songs in any style, all building on these patterns that you can now see in plain sight. This, in a nutshell, is music theory, to see sound. It's the science behind the art of music. But of course, the point is to make it an applied science, to use theory for songwriting, to see sound in order to make music. So all of the videos and playlists on this channel are organized like building blocks to give you a full and complete picture for you to create your own songs. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you in the next video.